there's a triangle on the board, so you know this is gonna be a good one. This is a super special video. We just recently passed 250 subscribers on the channel, which is so exciting. It seems like just a couple weeks ago, we were at 200. These last 50 subscribers really came quickly, which is super awesome. And thank you so much to all of you who have subscribed to the channel. And thank you also to anybody who's ever shared a video or liked and commented. It's really helpful to get this stuff out here. And I really love sharing this stuff with you. So keep sharing it with everybody else, especially this video, because I think it's gonna be really helpful, really insightful, because I'm going to be covering what I'm calling the grand unified theory of music. So this idea of a grand unified theory actually comes from physics, and it's this idea that we can take a lot of different principles in physics and sort of merge them into like one equation or one principle that sort of relates them all together. Um, feel free to Google more about that in physics. I only know a tiny bit about it, but I love the idea of all of this simple stuff sort of coming together um, to make this sort of process or, or bigger idea. Um, that's one of my favorite things to figure out. And I think what I figured out with music is gonna be really powerful for helping you to figure out exactly what you should be doing in the practice room and exactly what the path is to becoming a great musician. Before we get into it, I do want to warn you that it's not super easy. It's not just this thing that you learn this and you're like, okay, I'm a great musician now but this is the process that you can engage with every day to gradually get better and better. Nobody just wakes up and is a good musician. It always, of course, takes practice and takes experience with these things, and really each corner of these triangles is an immensely vast topic that you can really dig deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper into. Even myself, every single time that I'm practicing, I'm digging deeper into these things, and even professionals, every single time they practice, they're digging deeper into these things, and that's what's so cool about it and, and what makes this uh, exciting grand unified theory that I cannot wait to share with you. So one last thing before we get into it, this is such a great topic. I actually created a downloadable handout that you might wanna get before you watch the video that you can take notes on and everything. So to get that, go to quickstartclarinet.com slash theory of music, or you can click the link in the description or the link on the screen um, to go there and get this download. You will have to put in your email address so I can email you the download, but of course you can always like unsubscribe if you don't want any like clarinet content content or any of my other emails. You can just get the one email, download the handout so you have this. This handout is going to be super powerful and actually something that you can put in your practice space to remind you of what you should be practicing each time you practice. Also, if you aren't a clarinetist, this can still be um, relevant to you. I sort of made this the theory of music in general, not just clarinet. I will talk some clarinet specifics, but it'll be good for any instrumentalist or probably any musician watching. Okay, without further ado, let's get into it. So we have the triangle. This is just like my how to play clarinet triangle or how to play music where we have these three important facets of it. Um, rather than those where the top thing is sort of the most important and it branches out, um, this is actually the fundamentals are probably the most important and then they build up to this, this tip. So it's an even better triangle. So what this is actually gonna be a tool for is learning any piece of music you ever come across whether it's a etude that you're working on or maybe even just an excerpt um, for an audition or a solo piece for a performance um, or even your band or orchestra music or whatever uh, ensemble chamber music you may be working on. Whenever you have a piece of music that you want to learn, even if it's just for fun, this is sort of the tools that we're going to be going through to do it. And there's also going to be a lot about actually playing the instrument better as well. So the first place to start is is with the music itself. So with this music, you're sort of gonna be asking yourself the question of how does it go? That's the important thing to figure out here. And with each of these, we'll get much more in depth. Um, so that's the music. And then the other base and foundation here is going to be the fundamentals of your actually playing the instrument. Um, the important thing that I like to get into with these fundamentals um, is the three-step warm-up. That's where we cover the fundamentals. And if you've been following my channel, you know all about my uh, fascination and obsession with warm-ups. But the main question to be asking here is, can I do it? So this is where you look at a piece of music and see 
if you're technically able to play it. Some pieces will simply be too hard for your technical ability because you haven't spent enough time yet with these fundamentals to really figure out how to play the instrument and, and get the control of the instrument you need for every single piece that you're going to be playing. And then all of this sort of accumulates into the important part, which is what we actually do when we're performing and also what we do every time we're playing in the practice room, and that is the execution. So the important question to be asking up here with the execution is how did I do? So this is where you're obsessing assessing your performance of how things went for you and you're sort of reflecting on that. And again, this isn't just like, how did I do at my big concert? How did I do on my recital? How did I do on the audition? This is like every single time you play, you're asking yourself, how did I do on that section I just practiced? You might even do it as you're playing a little bit, only when you're practicing to be like, okay, how did I do on this note? How was the beginning of this phrase? How did I start this note? How, how did I do? So I hope you can already start to see how this sort of encompasses everything that we ever need to do with music as we're learning a piece of music. Um, and if you're interested and, and engaged now, um, go to quickstartclarinet.com slash theory of music so you can get the handout and follow along and take notes because we're gonna be going more in depth with each of these as I go through the video. But you can see already how you can use this process and this is very similar to how we do when we're, when we're practicing. We, play something and we're like, hmm, did I do that well enough? Oh, I didn't like this rhythm here. I played some wrong notes here. So we're reflecting and assessing um, and thinking about like, how did I do? And then we can fix it and be like, hmm, this is a really big, awkward leap where I'm playing some high notes I'm uncomfortable with. So maybe we need to dig into the fundamentals more and like figure out how to actually do that on the instrument. Maybe you're coming up against a tricky rhythm and sort of faking your way through it. And you're like, you know, I don't actually really know how that rhythm goes. So that's this, how does it go category. So every single thing that we come across in our practicing comes really down to these three processes. Everything you've ever looked at in a piece of music and had issues with or um, weren't able to figure out or weren't able to play can be in one of these sort of categories. And then that whole process of practicing in general all comes down to this execution where we're just uh, trying it again and again, different ways, focusing on different things, isolating and improving, um, and always with that goal of having that consistent execution of things. So let's get a little bit more in depth with each of these corners of the triangle. Um, so I can tell you some of the things more specifically to be focusing on when you're asking yourself, how does it go? How did I do? And can I actually do it? So starting with the music, I have sort of a three-step process. And as you could tell by the triangles, I really like my three-step processes um, because I think it's just enough to really think about and concentrate on without being too overwhelming or too simple. Um, so for music, the three-step process is to first listen to whatever piece you're doing if there's a recording available uh, and then do some of your own analysis and actually analyze the piece uh, and then the final step of it is to make a plan for yourself of what you actually want to do with it. So when you're listening to it this is sort of like your big picture this is where you're thinking about how does it go? How does it feel? Just general observations, sort of the mood slash energy, uh, the feel of things. Um, this is your big, big picture of how this piece goes and starting to just get your first impressions of, of how this goes, the interesting bits, um, and sort of hearing how, how the music comes across in sound. Remember when we're looking at the printed page of music, that's just a representation of it. It's actually the sound that is the music, the sound that we hear, the sound that we create, that's what music is. So when we're listening, we're getting that sense and that idea of how does this actually go when it's coming across in sound. Um, if you don't have a recording of the piece that you're playing, um, first of all, Google it, search for it. There's recordings of so many things out there. They may not, may not be great recordings, um, but there's 
lots of recordings out there. If it's something that definitely there isn't a recording of, maybe you're doing the world premiere of something which can be fun and exciting and definitely doesn't have a recording, then you're not gonna really be able to listen to it and it's up to you to analyze and plan to sort of come up with how this music should sound based on what's written on the page. And that's also what's fun about doing world premieres. But in any case, listening is all of this big picture stuff of how it goes. Then you can move on to analyzing it where you really like break down the actual stuff on the page and also think about maybe some of the history of the work. So the history, the background of the music itself, um, breaking down what I call the uh, how to play music triangle, which is rhythm and then notes and style. Um, again, we have another triangle. I love my triangles. Um, rhythm is very straightforward. That's the actual counting of things. You have to be able to count every single rhythm in your music. Uh, and I actually strongly encourage thinking about the counting as you're playing along so that you're keeping track of all that. The notes, of course, you need to be able to play all the notes and able to recognize all of the notes in a piece. Maybe if you're analyzing a piece and you're like, wow, there are a lot of altissimo notes in this. Maybe that'll be a good indication that you should spend some time practicing your, your altissimo notes and maybe even doing scales up in the altissimo to get comfortable with it because that's what the music demands. That's how the music goes. Um, and then style is a really broad category. Um, it includes everything like dynamics, so seeing what the, the shapes of things are, articulations, um, are there a lot of staccatos that you're gonna have to figure out? Tempo, is it fast, is it slow? Um, all of these different kinds of questions. Sort of along with style also, which is a little bit bigger picture, um, is the form and the phrasing. It's really, really good to know how the phrase structure works in a piece, so you know when you're in like the A section of the form and then the B section and then maybe we return to the A section. Um, that can give you lots of ideas for how things should match or how you might want to contrast things here and there. And then also the general phrasing where you go down and be like, okay, in this four measure sort of half a phrase. I want this to be the peak of that and then I want to come away from that No, And in this eight measure or 16 bar phrase, we're all leading towards here and then coming away from that. Uh, this is where the resolution is. These are the cadences. Um, all of that stuff with the phrasing is, is all what we can dig into with the music. You can see that every corner of the, the whole grand unified theory triangle um, is going to be able to be really in depth. And this music one is definitely one of those ones where we can always go more and more in depth with these details and find more nuggets of the music. This is why when some people say, like with the Mozart clarinet concerto, for example, like every time they come back to it is like a new adventure and exciting. They're playing the same notes and rhythms that they always have been, but Mozart was such a genius of putting in all of these kind of nuances and you notice like, oh, before I thought this was what was happening in this phrase, but now that I look at it and think about this other section of the piece, wow, maybe there's this something different happening here. This is where the real excitement of music comes in and where it's really good to do this analysis and, and think through these things so that you can come up with your plan. So for the plan, we're gonna take everything that we've learned from listening and analyzing, and we're going to make some decisions. This is where we sort of come up with our own musical point of view, and this is where we are able to like imagine everything how it goes. So like I was saying with the Mozart concerto, for an example, you may look at this phrase and do some analysis of the phrase. You look at the rhythmic groupings in there. You look at the notes, maybe like what's the highest note? Where is it resolving to? You think about all of this style stuff, and that gives you an idea of where this music's going, how this phrase should be, and then you can make your decisions. So maybe some recordings you hear, or some people when they're playing, or maybe even some teachers tell you to put an emphasis on one certain note, but maybe after your analysis of it, you're like, hmm, I think it might actually sound better with this other note. And again, when you're practicing, you can always be experimenting with this, changing things around, deciding what sounds the best for you, feels the best and makes the most musical sense for you, and that's your point of view. And that's what's really cool about playing music is you get to make decisions for yourself and, and come up with your own unique plan for how it should go. 
And then once you've made some of those decisions, you have to sort of ingrain that in your, your body and in your brain and in your mind. And that's where it's really, really useful to imagine through how the music goes. I always suggest um, before playing or sometime in the early stages of playing, maybe play through it once or twice to just hear the notes and get it in your ear or listen to it once or twice to hear it. And then do all of this analysis and, and make this plan so that even before you're really seriously practicing, you have this clear image in your head of like exactly how the music should go. Maybe with the Mozart concerto, for example, we're thinking We have all of that planned out, exactly the right articulations, the style of the articulations, um, the phrasing, Bottom. All of that stuff is already planned out and we can hear that so clearly in our heads that when we go to play it, we'll be able to execute that hopefully fairly well. And if we're not executing it when we're playing it, then we'll know right away. So that brings me to our next area of the triangle, the next corner, which is of course execution. So now that we've studied the music and we have a plan for how things should go, the next step is to simply play the music and, and see how it goes. Um, once we play, then we do what I just said, see how it goes, where we reflect on it. And then we improve whatever needs to be improved. And this is sort of a, a never ending process. And the goal of this process is consistency. That's what makes professionals professional, is that they're able to get the results they want very consistently. Um, there's a great quote, I'm not sure who it's by, um, if you know, let me know in the comments, but it goes, um, an amateur will practice until they get it right, a professional practices until they can never get it wrong. And that's this idea of consistency. And this is the process of practicing that we do to get that consistency. Um, so we'll play something and be like, yeah, this, this is, this is what I played. Now we reflect on it and ask ourselves, how did I do? This is the main part of the execution, that big question of how did I do? Um, this is where it's really important to be honest with yourself. And the clearer that you have your musical plan, the better you'll know how I did, because you'll know that you want to do a crescendo here, or you want to emphasize this note, or you want the articulation to be just like this. You have that plan, and then you can reflect and be like, did I actually get that uh, articulation coming out of the instrument, coming across in the room? Um, did I get that emphasized note? Did it, was it really clear that that was the note I was leading to? Did another note accidentally pop out um, that I didn't mean to have pop out? So that sounded like the most interesting note. The clearer that musical plan is, the stronger the foundation of the triangle, the easier it'll be to reflect. And then of course, the final part is to improve. Um, so once you've reflected and been like, ah, oh, no, I think this note popped out and, and came out a little too strong, then you can be like, okay, this next time I'm going to make sure that I'm not too aggressive on that note and I don't let it pop out. I don't let the clarinet be in control or whatever instrument be in control. I control the instrument to make the music that I want. So we go through this process of play, reflect, improve, and then we return back to try it again. This is sort of this overall feedback loop that's where you really start to make improvements and this is where really the bulk of your practicing is spent where you play the piece, you reflect on it, hmm, how did I do? And then you improve it however you need to to, to keep looping around. You decide what you're going to fix and then you fix it. You play, see an issue, fix it, then play again to see if it stayed fixed. Always going through this different process and, and moving through of that same exact feedback loop and, and experience there. A couple things um, that can help with this feedback loop is um, when you're reflecting, recording yourself can be super, super useful. Um, we sometimes aren't completely honest with ourselves, partially because we want to think we're better than we are or we think we're worse than we actually are. That's totally um, a possibility as well. Um, or we just simply don't have the concentration to be playing and really assessing honestly how we actually sound in real time. So recording yourself is a great way to just play, let the recorder 
pay attention to everything, then later you can listen back to the recording or even right after you play, listen back to the recording and come up with what you think about it and do your assessment and reflection of the recording rather than having to worry about doing it in real time. This is also great if you're doing a bigger chunk of music or working on a whole piece where it's just impossible to remember everything in your head that went wrong uh, while you're trying to play the whole entire piece too. So recording is your best friend for this process and I highly encourage uh, anybody who's playing and practicing seriously to record yourself and, and see those details that you may be missing. And with this improve section, I actually really like the uh, three eyes of practicing um, that I have a video about that you can watch if you would like. Um, this goes really in depth into how to actually practice and the process of practicing. Um, the first I is to identify. The second I is to isolate um, slash improve, which yeah, I know is, is sort of four I's, but they really go interchangeably. They're, think of them as the same word. You're doing the same thing, but it's important that you're doing both of those things. Um, and then Finally, we integrate it all together. Um, so in this three eyes of practicing, it's similar to what we've already talked about. And probably in your reflection, you're actually doing this first eye of identifying where you're thinking what went wrong, trying to figure out exactly what the opportunity is for you to get even better. Then we're gonna isolate and improve that. This is where simplification is a must. Once you've identified like, oh, this passage of 16th is, is really hard. I don't know how to count this rhythm. This is tricky. Um, then you isolate it and do whatever it takes to make it easy, make it comfortable, really improve it and actually get it. Um, there's more information about that in the, the Three Eyes of Practicing video, but really making sure that it's comfortable and easy and doing whatever you need to to simplify it, take it apart to its more basic layers um, and get those going really well before you build it back together is, is really good there. So going slower, just counting the rhythm, just fingering along, um, trying to like buzz it or doing some kind of air exercise on it. All of those things are good. And then finally, we need to integrate it all back together where we've isolated and proved the, these sections, and then we go back to the beginning where we play the bigger chunk together and make sure that we can do it well, as well as we got it when it's going in context. Now you may be going through this feedback loop and this practice process and finding that when you ask yourself, how did I do? Just every single time you're saying, I did not do well, it is not going well. Um, and you may find yourself getting frustrated and banging your head against the wall, not being able to play what you need to play, at least up to the standard that you want to play it. And that may be showing a issue with the foundation of your triangle on the other side of the triangle, which is of course the playing the instrument and the fundamentals of the instrument. So this is where you ask yourself, uh, can I actually do this? And this is where we explore how to play the instrument. Um, in order to play anything in the music, you have to be able to do that on the instrument first. So no matter how good your uh, musical plan is, no matter how precise you want to be with this or, or how much you've listened to it and you're like, oh man, this piece just has the most beautiful legato. And, and when you're imagining it, you hear just these effortless, seamless connections between the notes. If you can't do that on the instrument, then it's going to be hard to actually play that and execute it at the, the top part of the triangle. So how to play the instrument is incredibly important. For clarinet, I call this the how to play clarinet triangle. Of course, we have another triangle. And that one consists of air, embouchure, and the tongue. And I think this triangle, this how to play clarinet triangle, actually applies pretty well to just about any wind instrument. Um, so not just clarinet. It doesn't apply very well to like string instruments or percussion instruments because you guys don't have air I'm a short or tongue, um, but you can think about it as sort of like your, your sound production um, and then the way that you're shaping notes and getting those articulations. So that does apply to pretty much every instrument, except for probably uh, vocals or voice. Um, 
But with clarinet, we have this triangle of how to play clarinet. And if you dig into these fundamentals and really make sure that you're doing each of these properly, then you'll be in really good shape. I have tons and tons of information about these fundamentals of playing the clarinet. You can actually get another separate handout um, for that by going to quick start, www.quickstartclarinet.com slash join. Um, and you should be able to sign up and join the official Clar Quick Start Clarinet community to get a handout that covers the three steps to mastering the clarinet. If you're already in the community, you, you have that and it goes much more in depth with each of these things for how to play. But in any case, it's really important that you're, you're tackling these fundamentals and really understand what the fundamentals are for your instrument, whether it's clarinet or something else, um, and know how to make that work and, and how to get the best sound and execute everything that you're gonna need to execute in your music. Now, the best way to practice that, this is just sort of the knowledge base and, and understanding how it, how it goes. The best way to practice it is what I call the three-step warm-up. Um, this one I don't put into a triangle, but it's three steps, so it could easily be a triangle. I should probably change it, honestly. Um, but we have the three-step warm-up, which goes over long tones are the first step. Then we have technique. And then the final step is articulation. So once you have all three of these things in place, this will cover just about everything that you ever need to do in your music. So long tones is all about sound and tone as we have the long tones. If you think about long tones, they're really the simplest exercises you're ever gonna play. It may just be holding one long note. And if you can't sound exactly how you want and sound great holding one long note, then you're probably not gonna sound great playing complicated 16th notes or jumping all around with all kinds of different articulations and complicated fingerings and, and all that stuff. So long tones are all about the sound on really simple long notes. So you build into your mus muscle memory how it feels to sound great. Technique now is where we start talking about the fingers and getting really good finger motion. Um, you may notice that I didn't include fingers on the how to play clarinet triangle. I do think fingers are an important part of this. Um, the how to play clarinet triangle is maybe more about how to get a great sound on the clarinet and how to shape the notes that you want. Um, then we just add in finger motion and, and moving our fingers precisely and relaxed with minimal motion to get around to all of the different notes that we use the air embouchure and tongue to get exactly the sound that we want out on those notes. So fingering is important and that's why we practice it in our technique exercises. With technique, you can think of them as sort of scale exercises as well, but we do these technique exercises to get our fingers comfortable, relaxed, moving quickly and smoothly, and most importantly, moving evenly. That idea of being really precise with the rhythm, really steady with your fingers, that's what will allow you to move really quickly eventually. So always prioritize being steady, smooth, even with the finger motion as you practice your technique exercises. And then the final one is articulation. And this is where we worry about the tongue and the note shape. Um, with each of these, the technique and the tongue, we want to be thinking about maintaining this great sound from the long tones. So that's why I go in this order. I get long tones sounding really great. I get the best sound that I can. And then I do that while wiggling my fingers and not my tongue. I always slur pretty much all of my technique stuff. Sometimes I'll do like hybrid exercises, but those sort of come later. So really um, slurring everything, making sure that I'm able to move my fingers to all the notes that I need to while maintaining the great sound and great connection between notes from the long tones. and then do the same thing with the tongue. So maintaining that great sound, don't let the motion of the tongue interrupt the great sound or disturb the sound quality, um, but still get all of the shapes that I need, whether it's legato articulation, staccato, accents, all of the different kinds of articulations on all of the different notes on the instrument as well throughout the range, getting that great shape to it. And if you can do these three things um, really comfortably and really confidently, then you'll be able to execute that all when you go to do those kinds of things in your music. Another way that you can think about these fundamentals, remember the, the question here is, can I do it? Um, if you can't do whatever you need to do in a piece of music in a simple um, warm-up version of it, then it's gonna be 
infinitely difficult always in your music. Um, I was recently playing through the William O. Smith five pieces for clarinet. Um, it has all kinds of jumps around. The the beginning is beam, bomb, beam, bomb, beat it up, beat it up. And it has all of these jumps around, like really crazy, like high E's and F's in the altissimo down to like low A flats. Beep, bada, beep, bada, beep, beep, bada, ba. All these kinds of jumping around. Um, it's really challenging in the music because it's moving by quickly. There's articulations with it, dynamic contrasts. The third movement of that or fourth movement um, is really crazy with all these like fortissimo E and then pianissimo low F and then all these crazy um, dynamic changes too. So there's a lot going on in the music there. Um, and if I wasn't able to do that in the most simple version where I do maybe a long tone slurring from through the octaves, low E, the next E, the next D, e, and the high E, and being able to move smoothly between all of the registers, then I would be a sitting duck on this super complicated, um, really challenging piece of music that I'm doing. So if you cannot do the most simple warm-up version where it's easy and, and all calm musically, then you're not gonna be able to do it in the uh, music that's more challenging and, and get that execution. So always, if you're getting frustrated and, and feeling really challenged, challenged in the execution phase of things and actually like playing the music, then dig into these fundamentals. Make sure that you're super confident doing it in a long tone version or a simple scale version of it. So just to finish things up, I want to go over again how all of these things sort of connect together and how this is the, the grand unified theory. You may have heard some of these things on their own before, like, oh, you should look at the key signature in a music and, and think about how the music goes. You may have heard that you need to do lots of repetitions and really um, identify and, and isolate and improve things as you're practicing. And you may have heard that you need to do your warm ups. But this sort of relates all of those things together. So you can really see how they connect and how they interact. The better plan you have for the music, the easier you're going to be able to know if you're doing it right or not. If you've ever played through a piece and were like, yeah, I think I did good, and that was, that was good, um, then you need to dig in more to the music and how it goes. If you're ever feeling like your music's really easy, you're sort of bored with playing it, then get more specific and more particular. Dig into like the actual phrasing. What note do you want to be the loudest? Um, are you being smooth and, and getting a smooth crescendo through that? Really dig into those fundamentals um, and get, get deeper into those layers of the music. It goes infinitely deep. All of these really go infinitely deep, which is what's cool about music. Um, with the execution, asking yourself how you did, but also being really honest with yourself. Don't just go through and play it and be like, yeah, it was okay, I'll go on. Be like, did I really get what I wanted? And again, the clearer that plan is of what you want, the easier it'll be to know if you got it or not. Um, also, of course, recording yourself to hear if it's actually coming across or it's just staying in your head and staying on the stage or if it's actually getting out into the audience. And then fundamentals, as always, you can see the stronger your fundamentals are, the easier you'll be able to conquer your music. So if you're doing your scales every single day, if you're sounding great on your long tones and getting those connections between notes, then you're not going to have a problem when you have to do complicated, crazy stuff in your music. So you can see how all of this is really related together and we're always going here and then here and then here and, and getting all of these things to go great. And if you get every single one of these corners and every single piece you play, you go really in depth with all of these processes that I went over, then you're going to be a great musician. This is probably the most like straightforward um, way that I've ever laid out the path to being a great musician. So I hope that this has been helpful for you. Uh, and just remember that you can always do more. Music is, and being a musician is a path. It's not a goal or a destination. You'll never one day be like, you know what? I know how my music should go. I know, I know this well enough. You'll never think, wow, I executed everything perfectly exactly how I wanted every single time. That's actually an unattainable goal. Not even professionals do it exactly how they want every single time. Um, you'll never be done practicing your long tones and your scales. Those are the most valuable things for you to be doing and, and something that you'll be doing for the rest of your life. So if this sounds really enticing to you and having this 
always potential for further growth and getting better and better and better as you continue to practice and, and work through things and get deeper with the music, deeper with your fundamentals and get even a higher quality and higher standard of execution, then music is the right thing for you. Um, if it doesn't sound like the, the most fun thing, that's okay, just have, have fun playing. Um, music can be great for anybody in, in any way, but if you wanna be a really great musician, a really high level player, these are the things for you to be thinking about. And just one last thing I want to remind you again to go to quickstartclarinet.com slash theory of music. If you want to get the handout of this, it has the actual triangle with all of the processes on it, as well as a page sort of describing all of this. And there'll be a link to this video so that you can always find this again to sort of refresh yourself on these ideas. I think it would be great to have this triangle just sort of hanging up or on your music stand or somewhere in your practice space. So you're always asking yourself, am I really getting everything I can out of the music? Am I really executing it the way that I have planned? Uh, and do I really have the fundamentals to be able to play this? And this is a great motivation to do those long tones and scales, which may not always be the most exciting, but the better you do them, the better you'll be able to do everything else. So go to www.quickstartclarinet.com slash theory of music to get that handout if you're interested in that. And thank you so much for all of the subscribers. We're at 250 or so right now when this is being uploaded, which I'm so excited about. This channel is really growing, which means a lot to me. And honestly, it wouldn't grow without the support of you giving me ideas on videos to do in the comments, sharing these videos around with your friends and family. This video would be a great one to share with just about anybody who is a musician um, because there's so much good stuff, at least I think, of how music works and how to play and that handout being in your practice space will help to like motivate you and guide you and, and really give you the specific things to be focusing on in your clarinet journey, in your musical journey, whatever instrument you may play. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for subscribing and sharing. Uh, I can't wait to see where this channel goes in the next year or, or in the future. Um, and I look forward to seeing you in another video.